What's that? What's that signify? The history of left-handedness. Last night, Lance of the Serfs and one sixth of the leftist mafia debated Tim Pool on his show, and it went wonderfully. So there is a clip that I have to show you because this is something that I have wanted to see in these debates forever, and Lance brought it up. So I'm going to get there. It is an amazing clip. But uh, this was covered live last night on the Leftist Mafia podcast. So uh, we all stream to our own channels, most of us do. So if you want to go to my channel and check it out, if you go to the homepage, you know, youtube.com slash the rational national, just look for the live tab and all the live shows are there, including me playing Advance Wars a couple weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> but there you go. So I wasn't on last night, I took the night off to watch the Leafs lose to the Panthers. Different discussion, different podcast, but let me get to this clip because this is truly amazing. So let me ask you a question. Uh, why do you Please. think we're seeing the incre uh, a rapid increase in the past few years I can of, explain that of, as well. mm -hmm. of young people identifying as trans? What's that, what's that signify? The history of left-handedness. This is the oh. history of left-handedness in the United States. Mm -hmm. Do you see what happens here? It, it, it levels out. It goes it up and up levels and out. Levels. We, used to pe uh, we used to treat people who were left-handed as satanic, as the devil, all that kind of shit. Do you remember uh, that, right? Uh, and that's why there was a lot of people who didn't record themselves as being left-handed. And then, boom, when we stopped doing that after the 1880s and in the 1900s, it spiked. Now, this spike isn't because there was a whole bunch of indoctrination or Alex Jones was like, oh, left-handed ideology, everyone has become left-handed. This has nothing to do with that. This is naturally how many left-handed people there were and then it plateaued. We are in a, in a situation right now where it is safer than ever for people to come out and, and if they're queer, bisexual, whatever it is, and because of that, they feel safer expressing that. That's why Gen oh, Z wow. of all I was generations- concerned there was a trans genocide. Yeah, so he, here's- This is this is the actual statistics on people increasing. You can see the red one, mm -hmm. that, that is Gen Z. That is the amount of people who in Gen Z, it's skyrocketing. It looks so, like they're so identifying more than ever because so, their generation feels more comfortable talking so about this kind of stuff. So you don't more, think yeah. that there's yeah. like a, a trans genocide or anything like that? I don't think that there's a trans indoctrination that is coming through media. Genocide, is, I said it. I, yes, and I'm saying that I don't think there's a trans indoctrination coming through media that is programming kids to become trans. I think that's ridiculous. What a great job there from Lance and bringing up that chart that I have wanted to see brought up in these debates forever. He brought it up. I'm going to bring it up again in this video later on. But first on how, look, look at how Tim Pool, once he loses the debate, tries to shift the framing of the discussion to, well, I guess there's no trans genocide. What is happening culturally or how people feel comfortable in their own spaces with their own friends online is different than what is happening them, uh, to them politically. And in many cases, their inability to simply be themselves because of the pressure that is coming down on them politically. So yes, even though society generally is more accepting of people who are trans, that doesn't mean that they are actually allowed to be who they are. So there's a few different ways to, to think about this because the reality is many people who were trans before this spike were already ending their lives. We just are now more aware of it partly because there are more people who are now willing to publicly identify as trans. And on that point, this from uh, The Guardian here, more than 50% of trans and non-binary youth in U.S. considered ending their lives this year. And that is because of high rates of depression, anxiety, and uh, yeah, of depression and anxiety. And of course, the political environment, the constant right-wing media framing on how satanic and, and terrible these people are, that is only going to lead to that. So simply because people are more willing to come out and be themselves doesn't mean that society, uh, and especially politically, that they are being accepted, which leads to higher rates of depression and anxiety and ultimately leads to these sorts of uh, thoughts. Now, this is going to the point about the political environment. This is 2023 anti-trans bills tracker. This is translegislation.com. So there are 533 bills in 49 states. 64 have passed, 372 still active that are anti-trans bills. This is an environment where there's a thousand other things that politicians, lawmakers could actually be focusing on low wages, low taxes for the wealthy while everyone else is getting screwed, uh, lack of opportunities, 
cost of housing, cost of health care. There are a million infrastructure. There are a million different things that they could be focused on. But because they think this is a political winner for them, that the right does, then they focus on this because this stuff is easy. This is a, a, a easy distraction for them from any actual issues. Now, I often hate how this is, and, and I've done this in the past, and I've changed my framing on this. This has in the past been discussed, or currently also, is being discussed as a culture war. This is not a culture war. This is human rights. This is a human rights issue. The inability for someone to be themselves because of whether it's legislation, whether it's right-wing media um, demonizing them, that is a human rights problem. A culture war is... Uh, the M&Ms are now less sexy. <laughs> For some reason, T Tucker Carlson, the right wing, very upset about that. That That is culture war. That is some, you know, who cares about that? That Like, that is actual culture war garbage. That is an actual distraction from real issues. Trans rights is human rights. That is not culture war. Now, Human Rights Watch, or Human Rights Campaign, uh, writing here, they're working to defeat 340 anti-LGBTQ plus bills at state level already, 150 of which target transgender people, highest number on record. So we are seeing a record high of the amount of uh, focus on this issue, even though trans people have existed forever. But now because the right wing can no longer really demonize, I mean, some of them still try, but they, they have lost the ability to uh, use gay marriage as an outlet for for anger and fear. They've now moved on to an even smaller minority of people for their focus. Another headline here, and uh, it's important to note that these laws are also targeting transgender adults. So there's a lot of, you know, there's unfortunate debate, uh, incorrect debate around uh, trans uh, laws around trans youth and the ability for for trans youth to to be themselves and identify as as how they want to be identified. But they're also targeting adults. This is, it's, it's wide spanning. Like the, there, there's no limit to what they are attempting to, to do here. Now on the um, graphs, I've brought this up so many times. <laughs> I'm so glad Lance brought this to the Tim Pool debate. The history of left-handedness. As Lance explained, it's clear why this happened. Why, it's clear why there is now a spike for a long while. There was this cultural idea that you, if you're left-handed, then you are Satan. <laughs> Thankfully, that changed, and people were able to be left-handed, and that's when the rates, you know, uh, flattened out. Now, who knows what, you know, the, the top-line rate of this is, whether it's trans, whether it's gay, lesbian, whatever, but point being is, who cares? What if it's 100%? What if every single person in the world is trans? Does it really matter? <laughs> like, who cares? Let people be themselves. This just like the same as being left-handed. Who cares? So, but you see here, as it becomes more, as society becomes more accepting of different kinds of people, then different kinds of people are more willing to be themselves. And this number continues increasing. So you see, you know, uh, millennials here, uh, increasing over the years. Uh, Gen Z, of course, in 2020, that was the first time that they were registered here, but 15.9%. And since then, this is Gallup. So Gallup has new data on this. 2021, it's now at 20.8%. So it jumped five percentage points for Gen Z. Because again, as society becomes more accepting and more Gen Z are coming into society <laughs> as adults, there is going to be a... Uh, a large representation of this number as people feel the ability or feel more willing to be themselves publicly. That doesn't mean that they don't still face high rates of depression, anxiety because of various factors, whether it's media demonizing them or whether it's uh, politicians trying to make it so they don't even exist. But whatever. Good job here from Lance. If you want to watch the whole debate, I believe he has it on his channel. I will link to it below this video, or you can watch uh, the commentary that the leftist mafia, minus me and a, and a couple others, um, they were on covering that last night. So check that out. And also, oh yeah, last thing. Even, the, look at this green screen. I still can't, okay. 
there's a green, of course, a green line through here. But uh, <laughs> my green screen is always going to mess up these shirts. But uh, the rationalnational.com slash merch, that will take you to the merch store. There are uh, shirts like this in various colors. There's also uh, mugs, hats, whatever you like. So go check it out. And uh, once again, good job, Lance. 